Third time's a charm, people. <laughs> Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am now trying this for a third time. I just kept getting interrupted by phone calls. So I am doing a zero-based budget. I am paid bi-weekly. I do a budget by paycheck sort of style and I leave money in my checking account to cover bills that fall in that two week cycle. The rest I pull out, I create a zero based budget with it. I work into it debt savings and um, sinking funds, that sort of thing. This one is going to be a lot of play money um, in the sense of just how things fell. I don't have a lot going on in these next two weeks. As far as bills, the heavy hitters, of course, will be in the next paycheck. So normally these are very pl planned ahead of time. And this is completely impromptu. So there might be a lot of mistakes and having to move things around. But if I get it right on the first try, that will be cool. <laughs> Would love that for us. <laughs> so um, this is pay with... Um, over time and I had everything closed before and it was such a pain to open up to find the spot so yes I'm now writing this for a third time luckily I did not get too involved the other times that I was writing this so what I do is I first write down my income so with my full-time job with some overtime I have $1,400 $73.78. I also include Joe's portion of renter's insurance um, because it comes directly out of my paycheck. And so because it's already paid out of my paycheck, it's Joe's turn to pay it. So I'm going to collect money from him. So the money will just stay in my... Um, so I'm going to count it as income, essentially. So we alternate who pays. So $7.40 cents for that and then what I do is I add that up and then I will zoom you guys in once I get the bills situated plus seven dollars forty cents okay so we have one thousand four hundred eighty one dollars and eighteen cents all right so next I do is I write down my bills and what falls in that two weeks. So I wrote down that snowball. This one's kind of optional. It was kind of the average of what I was doing. It was like $100 was going toward another debt that I was paying every time I got paid. So I'm going to put this in a different category. Um, so we'll go down here. Okay. So Jim. So we have Jim at... $29.95. I was not going to budget for that, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to leave it there in case there's any funny business. I'm in the process of possibly transitioning gyms. There was a leap year sale for Planet Fitness. It was 29 cents to start. I signed up for the $10. I just, I never 100% felt comfortable at my gym that I go to now. So we're going to kind of play it out, but I'm going to put this in my budget in case there's any funny business of them not stopping it in time, that sort of thing. If I do decide to cancel, I have until that point to figure it out. Then we have my student loan. Oh, wow. Here's mistakes, people. <laughs> Student loan of 200. Canva that comes out of my business expenses. Debt snowball again. Nothing over here. Now we will look at this portion. Wow, it's it really is a lot of debt snowball. So then we have cell phone for 2861. And then we're going to write gym, and this is for Planet Fitness. I don't know if it's 10 flat or if there's sales tax. So we'll just say 
whatever. I have a buffer. It's going to be like six cents or 60 cents, if anything. So we'll say $10 for gym. Oh, and speaking of buffers, I am going to be honest. I did go over <laughs> um, in my grocery budget and I'm paying myself back essentially. Um, it was, I went a little bit over grocery and I'm not going to lie, I did do an extra Chick-fil-A sort of run. So we're going to say buffer and we will say $15 for that to cover. But the groceries, um, I ended up going over because I got a coffee. They had my coffee in stock and I jumped on it. I could have waited till this pay cycle to budget it into grocery, but I wanted to jump because the flavor is sometimes hard to get. I really love the Snickers flavor <laughs> of the donut shop coffee. It's so, so, so good. Okay. So as you see, that's literally it in bills, which is insane. It's really just two gym memberships, possibly, uh, student loans, and cell phone. Make sure. Oh, excuse me. And Comcast. Oh, shoot. This is changing. I cannot remember how much, though. The, I think it's going down. So what happened was the cost of the Comcast went up. And I told Joe, because it was like 11 bucks more for just my portion. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, like a budget for it every, every time. Like that went up quite a bit. And so he looked and he changed the package room and that sort of thing. So it should be lower. But to be on the safe side, like I said, we are going to budget for the full 44 I want to say it's going to be in the 30 range moving forward. So I might have a little bit extra in my buffer this time. So that should be everything. Like I said, this is probably going to be longer because I'm doing a lot of thinking out loud. So we have $29.95 plus $200 plus $28.61 plus $10 plus $15 plus $44. So three twenty seven and fifty six cents. So then we take the income minus the bills. So one thousand four hundred eighty one dollars and eighteen cents minus three twenty seven and fifty six cents. Okay, and sometimes I like to double check myself because <laughs> I actually didn't look over what I typed to make sure. Okay, cool. So basically we have this here. I just leave the cents in the buffer, the change. So we have $1,153 to play with, which is so super crazy. But what I like to do first is do savings challenges for debt um so we'll just we'll just say extra debt now we're going to look up every time that i have written down a debt snowball so as my journey has progressed if I had something due on a certain due date of, of, of a bill in the minimum and I paid it off, I then write debt snowball and what that minimum was. So that way I can make sure that I am diligently putting towards extra debt, making sure that I'm always budgeting for my debt snowball. And of course, I'll budget more on top of it if I'm able to. So with that said, we have... We definitely have room to do this at the minimum. So we have a hundred for that. We have, let's see here. We have 
40 for that debt snowball. Okay, so this is the 7th through the 20th. Okay, we have a debt snowball of 38, a debt snowball of 60. Okay, and that's it. So $238 in debt snowball. Extra debt. So we'll just say debt snowball. I should have written it in the front. This is usually my rough draft. What I don't film is like I have a rough draft first and then I can like polish it as I have been filming it lately. So that's debt snowball. Then what I like to do is if I work overtime, I like to also use that toward debt. So just rough numbers here will say 1473 minus my paychecks normally are around 1200 so that's plus another 273 um, and just extra income from overtime so that will be extra debt so let's add up this and there's probably going to be more going to debt but this is what we have so far so 238 plus 273, so we have 511 to play with. So then what I do is I take this number, because this was the number we have remaining to play with. So we do $1,153, keeping the change there to buffer, minus 511. So 1153. Minus 511, so that is $642. Awesome. Okay, so 642 is what we have. Wallet is up next. I will be going to my hometown area and I will be house sitting or dog sitting rather. My sister is going away with her husband and her son. And they're going to go away for a few days, so I'm going to take that into account with this cash stuffing. So I'm going to do grocery as I would, and I'm going to do $140. There should be nothing different. We're not like hanging off of chandeliers or anything crazy just because my body is not in my home. You know, we're going to keep things normal. Now the cost of living is a bit more expensive. My sister lives in um, like the King of Prussia area. And if you're from Pennsylvania, you, you kind of know that's kind of like a wealthier area. So groceries might be a little bit more expensive, but I think I'm going to take some shelf stable things, like things that don't require refrigeration with me, like some K cups and stuff like that to get me through. Like, why not? Like, why do I need to buy an entire brand new box of coffee when I can just take some of that with me? You know what I mean? So groceries is 140. One thing I didn't take into account was when I was budgeting for um, for coffee last time, I only did five, but the minimum on the Dunkin' Donuts app is 10. All of that to say we are doing a $10 minimum for coffee. She has a Starbucks nearby too so i don't know maybe we'll do starbucks whatever so this is going to be different i am going to be meeting up with my best friend it, it was her birthday i am going to see my mom is there in a nursing home like in Pottstown. it's like right on the border of where my sister lives so i'm going to visit my mom in the nursing home and probably surprise her and bring her some chick-fil-a so and then i don't 100% know of what's going on with my friend and I like what we're doing her son is going to be with us so we are limited but I am going to budget for fun money it's just easier instead of saying x amount to take out only an x amount to if you want to do an activity like mini golf like I genuinely don't want to put that much brain power into it because at the end of the day if it's in my wallet i'm super fluid with my wallet and moving funds around as needed so with that said we are doing a hundred dollars okay so that should be it for the wallet 
but I forgot to budget for gas. Okay. Um, we'll just do, you know what? We will just put it in the wallet. We will budget for, let's call it $40. I have about a half tank, but it is a two hour drive from where I'm at. And so for sure I will need gas. Okay. So that should be good. That's exciting. We're actually putting $40 cash for gas. Okay. And honestly, who knows? That may not be enough. I'm really going to try not to spend all of this money. Because then I have an entire week of when I am home. And Joe's going to be like, hey, let's get takeout. So $140 plus... 10 plus 100 plus 40 so oh my gosh okay whatever so 290 i was gonna say should we just round it up to 300 but whatever we'll just keep it so 642 because i'm taking this number and i'm bringing it down so 642 minus 290 so we have 352 dollars remaining okay now we will be doing sinking funds we will do uh, um wait did I seriously write 350 when it says 352? <laughs> ah, that's so funny. I'm going to leave 26 week blank for now. Because I might want to budget additional money. Because 26 week is for debt. It's also for debt. So we're going to leave it blank for now and we will circle back to it. Teddy, we are going to budget for, let's do, oh, you know what? We are getting low on letter. Let's actually, so this is what I do typically off screen. I'll pull out and I'll see what they have. Oh, she has 34 in here. So maybe we'll, just to get rid of those $2, we'll do like 17. That's what we'll do, 17. Okay, and then we have Teddy911. Oops, let's take a look at this one to see what we have left so we'll pull out Jesse Budgets Challenge here and see what we have to color. I do want to do a higher amount on here. So let's try to get the T done. So we will do a $20, but because I'm budgeting or because I'm doubling, it's going to be $40. So Teddy911 is going to be $40. I hope that makes sense. The savings challenge is for 500, but I'm doubling it so that it equals 1,000, which means every time that I color in a number, we're doubling the amount that's going in there. Okay. I do want to kind of keep a mental note of where we are at with my sinking funds, though. So we had 352 minus... 17 minus 40. Okay, so we have 295 left. Um, car insurance. I'm doubling up. That way I don't have to worry about it next paycheck. But I'd normally do 40 a paycheck. So we're doing 80. So minus 80. So 215 left. Let's see here. Dental. We're not going to do dental. Medical. So medical. 
cool. We'll do 25 vision. Vision, we will do 25. Okay, then I know that I wanted to put, we're gonna do, we're gonna let myself spend some money here. We're gonna do 40 into home. I do wanna get a new curtain for the front door. The one that I have is like fraying and it's really, really old and gross. So we'll put it at 40 for home. And then we will do, oh, let's account for this. So we have like 125 left. So household. Household is going to get 20. Sam's Club is going to get... Um, 30 gifts so gifts is getting 50 no gifts actually is getting gifts is getting 45 plus yeah, because then I want to do my annual binder. Annuals. And budget 30 in there. So that is probably a zero-based budget. <laughs> I went a bit heavier with things than I thought I would. See, the sinking funds, they go quick. They go quick. I didn't even budget for car maintenance or anything like that <laughs> see these two things i don't like i'm trying to beef them up like especially vision because i do need to get contacts this is one of those things where i'm like ah, should we change the amount because vision has 45, 40, so to have 65. I've not gotten contacts before. I still have the trial ones that they gave me, to be honest. It's kind of wild. So this, um, this might, this might be the budget. So I'm possibly going to have a buffer with the gym if I can get that canceled without any funny business. If I do decide to stick with Planet Fitness this bill is possibly going to be lower. So I might have a little bit of wiggle room. I didn't end up circling back to 26 week, which is fine because I can figure out off camera. But I see, and this is where I kind of move things around. I did not dump money into my me binder like I wanted to. I really, really, really want to get my hair done. But it's going to cost $75 to finish a savings challenge. So maybe I will... Oh, and I didn't get to stuff for vacation. See, this is what happens. You go through your budget and then you realize, oh, there's things I want to budget for. So this is what we'll do. I have money in medical for my copay. We will make this... Instead of medical, this is going to be vacay or my character challenge. So 25 there. And then what else can I slash? So that's what we'll do. So if I have any extra money from fun, I'm going to try my hardest not to spend all of that. I can always put use whatever I have left and put into my me binder. So I think that sounds good. Let's just count up all of this 
I make sure that it equals 352 for a zero based budget. Awesome. So 352. So that is a zero based budget. I don't know why. I now it just looks like a donut that was crossed out. And if it's been crossed out, that means I ate it. That's why it's eliminated. Anyways, I'm sorry, you have to see if you've made it to this point. Hashtag donut. Let's just say it because if you were there for that awful dad joke i am so sorry but yeah this is basically how it goes i just kind of sit here and i when i make my budget and i de decide where i put sinking funds i just kind of weigh my priorities at the moment and though i really want to dump money into vacation you know i still have quite a bit to go for getting the money there. It's not a big deal. I have other things going on. You know, I've done a lot of overtime and I just wanted to give myself a little bit more fun, I suppose. But if you are still here, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I hope that seeing how I do my budget gives you ideas. Maybe you are watching this video and you don't cash budget or you don't budget at all. You know, there's so many different methods of budgeting. You can make it your own. But the biggest thing is knowing where all of your money is, which is the beauty of a zero-based budget because you are giving every single dollar a job to do. You are living within your means. So thank you again, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Bye.